Yo, what is up guys? It's Pedro here and we got some news. It's not great news, but tight ends coach Pete Hainer has retired and the Washington Commanders are expected to hire Juan Castillo as his replacement. So we're going to talk about that, talk about how this affects the team, and I'll give you guys some background information on Juan Castillo. So if you guys are new, make sure to subscribe for Washington and NFL content, hit that like button, and turn on those notifications so you never miss a video. Also, go ahead and follow my Twitter. I'm trying to get to a 1,000 followers on there. Now, let's get right into the video. Okay, so obviously this isn't great news for the Washington Commanders because Pete Hanner was a really, really good coach for us, but you know, I'm happy for him. He had a really long career and a good one as well. I mean, he obviously was in Carolina with Ron for a while and helped turn Greg Olson into one of the better tight ends in the National Football League. And then here, he helped turn Logan Thomas, who was kind of like a backup, a second and third string guy who played quarterback before, into one of the better tight ends in the NFL top 10 when he did play for us. And his contract showed that. And then John Bates, he helped develop him just in his rookie year. You know, we thought John Bates would be a solid blocker and could eventually develop into a solid pass catcher. Well, he did more than that in his rookie year. He was an elite blocking tight end. I mean, PFF ranked him, I believe, as the number one run blocking tight end in the NFL and obviously you got to take some of those things with a grain of salt but you could see if you watch the film or even watch the game that John Bates was affecting the game in a major way he was a really good blocker for us and he started to develop as a pass catcher so I really like John Bates and hopefully he continues to develop because I feel like Pete Hainer did a really good job developing him same thing with Ricky Seals Jones and you know Samus race I think it's a little bit too early to tell but let's hope you know some of those tips and tricks that P. Hanner gave him, some of the coaching he, you know, gave Samus Reyes and these other guys sticks with him, you know, with them for the rest of their careers in Washington and in the NFL. But, you know, good for Pete Hanner because, I mean, he, I think he's 70, 71 years old. So, I mean, it's really stressful being a coach. You know, you're getting paid a decent amount, but obviously not the same as a head coach. And it's long, long hours, so he's going to be able to relax for you know, a while. So that's good for him there. And yeah, I mean, now Washington is expected to hire uh, tight end coach Juan Castillo. Um, Juan Castillo was an offensive line coach for the Bears this past season. And let's, I'll read this right here from Tom Pelissero. The commanders are hiring veteran assistant Juan Castillo as their tight ends coach, replacing the retiring Pete Hainer. Source said Castillo, who worked with Ron Rivera two decades ago in Philadelphia, most recently was Chicago's O line coach. And I know a lot of people are going to say, well, you know, he was in, you know, Carolina. A lot of coaches do, you know, bring guys in from Carolina. And someone like Juan Castillo, you know, and I don't even, yeah, he wasn't even Carolina, sorry. He worked with Ron Rivera in Philly, I believe, for a couple years. But, you know, he's been in so many different places that, you know, he has a bunch of different views. So it's not like he just had it under Ron. So um, I'm interested to see what he can do there. So let's look at his background real quick. Um, so he was an offensive line coach this past season. Let's go to the start right here. So um, in 1995, offensive assistant coach for the Eagles. And he was with the Eagles until, let's see, until 2000. And wow, a long time. He was with the Eagles until 2012. So he was the Eagles for a while. And he's a very, <clears throat> sorry, versatile guy. I mean, you look at this. Run game coordinator, defensive coordinator, offensive line coach um, for a while. I mean, that's his bread and butter. That's what he's been doing for a while. Offensive line coach, um, tight ends coach, offensive assistant coach. And I mean, he's just done a lot of things. You know, he was in Philly for a while. And Ron Rivera, while he was there, he was kind of the defensive coordinator and linebackers coach. That's when Ron Rivera was in Philly. That's what he personally was doing. And, you know, Juan Castillo might have been on the defensive side of the ball when Ron was there. Not, you know, not completely sure what years Ron was there. But still, nonetheless, they have a connection, not a major one, but definitely a connection worth noting. In 2013, he went to the Ravens as a run game coordinator, then was an offensive line coach there until 2016, then 2017, run game coordinator and offensive line coach. That you know, it's pretty much the same until the last couple of years, offensive line coach. So, kind of interesting right there. You know, an offensive line coach for every single year, you know, or almost every single year that he was a coach, and he was a tight ends coach for one year. So, um, interesting that Ron Rivera is picking him. 
We'll see. I mean, he's a guy that's so versatile. He's been, you know, around the game for so long that I'm sure he's going to be able to coach these tight ends up. It's just interesting that he's only been, he's been in the NFL for over 20 years as a coach, but he's never, you know, he's never, he's only been a tight ends coach for one year. So that is interesting, but we'll see how it ends up, you know, going. Um, and let me, there was a tweet I saw earlier. Where is it? Um, I, oh, th- there it is. So uh, Brian Mitchell, who, you know, obviously Redskins legend, but, you know, he w- he did play for Philly for a while. And he said um, on Juan Castillo, Juan's going to work the hell out of them. They're going to wake up working and they're going to go to sleep working. So, you, I mean, you want to see that in your coaches, making sure they, you know, get the best out of their players, make sure they're working on Pete Hainer did that. Pete Hainer was loud, but, you know, his guys definitely embraced it and were able to take in the information he gave them. So, you know, this is not a major, major move right here. It's not going to have a huge effect on the season, but let's hope that, you know, Juan Casillo is able to develop these guys. Another thing that's, you know, worth noting is that you look at John Matsko, who I believe is our best assistant coach on the roster. He, you know, did a really, really good job with this offensive line this past season, the year before that as well. He is 71 years old, so who knows what's, you know, how much longer he's going to be coaching. I think this, I mean, who knows, maybe he'll retire this year, um, but if not, I think it's, a, you know, a year, maybe two to three years at the most. He's going to be, he's going to retire soon, in my opinion, because, I mean, he's getting up there in age, and assistant coaches, you know, they usually coach a little bit longer than NFL head coaches in terms of age, but not too much longer because, you know, eventually they want to just chillax for a while. So um, John Matsko is another name to keep our eye out for. And besides that, though, I don't think there's going to be any major coaching changes. No, you know, I don't think we're going to bring anyone, you know, we're not going to fire anyone who is currently on the staff. And, you know, I guess that's okay, but I really thought we should have, you know, we should move. I really think we should move on from Sam Mills, our defensive line coach. I don't think he's done much here. You know, part of the, you know, lack of production from some of our defensive linemen are on them. But at the same time, you got Chase Young and Montez Sweat who really have been just relying on their athleticism, not that many pass rush moves. You're supposed to be able, you're supposed to help them with that. And, you know, really hasn't, he hasn't done that yet. So uh, we'll see if he's able to do it this year. And I think Steve Russ is another guy that might be a guy that we might move on from after this year if we don't get more out of that linebacker position because it's been ugly the first couple of years and some of that's been the personnel. But I mean, at the same time, you drafted a rookie in the first round um, and you thought, you know, they thought he was going to be a middle linebacker. They weren't able, you know, uh, Steve Russ wasn't able to develop him into that. So going to be interesting. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe if you guys are new, and turn on those notifications so you never miss a video. Peace, guys.